All right, y'all. I, look, I never thought this day was going to come. I'll be honest with you. I got a DM on Instagram that said uh, Tim Ross and Mike Todd had made a video. And I happened to be in the video as well. And that they're going to be addressing all of the backlash and uh, criticism and, you know, quote unquote, slander that came from myself as well as other YouTubers who were making videos about them. Um, let me just show you this video and then we'll have a conversation about it, all right? The pastor Mike Todd received major backlash after hawking up a loogie, spitting it into oh. his hands, and smearing the spit over a man's face as a demonstration no. of laying what? hands. The only stripper I'm in love with is Jesus. What is going on? In today's video, we're going to be talking about Michael Todd. His church conducted their so-called Easter church service. Because why preach the word of God when you could create an entertaining spectacle instead, right? And this is going to be concerning Tim Ross. Um, I'm going to start calling Tim Ross the cussing pastor. Mike Todd has been under a lot of criticism because of his Easter service play. Look, I don't know what's been going on with Tim Ross and his podcast recently. I don't like it, though. That feedback is loud. I I am a human being, fam. Yes, sir. You are a human. We've talked about this. Yes, sir. But it's going to help somebody yeah. for us to process this <clears throat> in the basement. In the basement. All right. So I hate, like, seeing myself on camera. It's really weird. I don't know if anyone else is like this. I would imagine that there's some people who are also like this as well. But anytime, like, I see my video or hear my voice, I, I kind of cringe. Like, I just... <laughs> I don't know what it is. I've always been like that. Um, okay, let's start here. Let's start here. They're supposed to, well, actually, the podcast in question, because this was a promo video promoting a podcast with Tim Ross and Mike Todd. And the podcast is supposed to be addressing all of the drama, right? I don't think I got to mention too much of the drama because if you're watching this video, then I'm assuming that you know about the drama, right? So they posted the podcast um, about two weeks ago, has 211,000 views. Um, I mean, that's a lot of views, especially for a video that's almost two hours long. I watched, um, this is not a proper indication of how much I actually watched. I watched probably out of an hour and 46 minutes of this podcast, I probably watched like an hour in 15 minutes of it, just to keep it real. Um, and I'll just say this. I think there's different types of criticism. Um, I'll, I'll Let me highlight two of those types of criticisms. I think there's one type of criticism that is rooted in hate and or jealousy. I think that's one type of criticism. And then I think there's another type of criticism that is rooted in love. And when it comes to Mike Todd and Tim Ross, I've always tried, heavy emphasis on the word tried, I've always tried to criticize from a loving viewpoint. And I've even said this in my videos about Transformation Church. You know, I said it's not for me. Trans Transformation Church, it's not for me. And let me clarify what exactly I mean by that. When I say it's not for me, that style of preaching is simply not for me. The the theatrics, that the 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 performance like element that they do on a weekly basis or seemingly a weekly basis, because I don't watch Transformation Church, that theatrical element is not for me. It's not for me. But I'm not saying that I don't like you. I'm not saying that I wish ill intent on your church. I'm actually saying quite the opposite. And I've said this in videos before. I've said that I want them to be successful. And I'm not even talking from a business standpoint because they're already wildly successful from a business standpoint. I'm talking about from a spiritual standpoint. I'm talking about from the standpoint of salvation. There's people in that church that are seeking God. I'm talking from a standpoint of being good stewards of your congregation and giving them a solid biblical understanding 
so that they can be saved and receive the true gospel and then equip them to be disciples so that they can go and share that gospel to everyone. So why would I not want a church to be successful? Even if I perceive a church to be going in the wrong direction, I don't want that church to burn to the ground. I want that church to turn and to focus on what really matters, which is Jesus, and forget all the extra you know, elements. And also, I'll say this as well. The, the, the thing about me, when I make a video specifically talking about a person like I've done in the past with Tim Ross, like I've done in the past with Mike Todd, I try, once again, heavy emphasis on the word try because I'm not perfect. I try to talk to this camera and criticize in the same manner that I would do it if they were sitting down face to face and I was looking them in the eye. So in, in, in other words, whatever I'm saying on video, I would have no issue saying it to their face because I'm not coming from the standpoint of somebody who has, you know, quote unquote, uh, uh, Twitter fingers. I'm not coming from the standpoint of, of somebody who's just a troll. I'm genuinely coming from a standpoint of a loving brother who is concerned and confused about what he's seeing. And I'm seeing these people who have a massive amount of influence, specifically within the Christian community. And I'm seeing these people who are older than me, who seemingly would be, you know, perceived to be wiser than me, who probably have more biblical knowledge than me. I'm seeing these people do certain things. And like I said, I'm genuinely confused as to what's going on. I'm genuinely concerned. And yes, sometimes I might say a joke, right? <laughs> I might I might tell a joke. I might, you know, I, I, I might say something like that that might be perceived as, you know, being like insulting or anything like that. But I'm really just joking when I'm talking about people. I'm really just joking. I'm honestly coming from a, a place where I just simply don't understand what I'm seeing and I'm trying to make sense of it. And here's the whole thing that confuses me. Mike Todd and Tim Ross. One of the biggest one of the biggest ethos that they stand for is being humble, being open and being transparent, which I can respect. But here's the thing. The moment somebody else is humble, open, and transparent about how they feel regarding a situation that involves you, then there's seemingly an issue. There's seemingly an issue. Now, I don't even think I want to go like step by step what they even said in the podcast because I don't really feel like they really addressed much of of anything. I mean, they talked about it, but they didn't specifically address anyone in particular. They kind of just talked vaguely about it and just keeping it a hundred percent real. Um, it was really a promotion for Mike Todd's new book, which is fine, which is fine. It is what it is. I thought this was extremely interesting. I don't know if you caught this. Um, this was Tim Ross on the Know For Sure podcast, episode 80. Um, and he's talking about cursing versus uh, cussing. I want to play this video for you. Um, and then I have some more to say. Y'all watch this and let me know what you think in the comments about this perspective. What? A curse word is. Yes. And what a cuss word yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody's saying I'm cursing. Down? Yeah, so a curse is. You gonna die later today? Review back, send that back to the people. Booyah, yeah, right? Don't you and that was a hypothetical. <laughs> and you, and you, and you like shanda, holya, <laughs> yaga, and you was ready to gargamel the thing down. You was ready to la 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 la. And that was a, that's a hypothetical, right? 
it's yes, a curse. It's a curse. It's a curse. What came on Balaam was a result of him trying to curse. Mm -hmm. He was hired to curse the Israelites, not to cuss them. Mm. We talking about words? Yeah. Mm. Do not let further communication come out of your mouth. Now, other people interpret it different. Yes. We talking about interpretations, mm -hmm. which everybody yeah. has. Yeah. <laughs> I got friends that speak in tongues. I got friends that can't get a shay la la, -la <laughs> out their mouth. <laughs> Never will. They don't have a starter kit tongue. They can say a Roku. <laughs> <laughs> it could be a TV or a starter tongue. They don't know which one it is. <laughs> they they, they, they don't know which one to do. Okay? <laughs> I got people that baptize in Jesus' name. I got people that baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Right. These are interpretations. interpretations. Lord have mercy. Church of God in Christ is Trinitarian. Pentecostal assemblies of the world is Jesus only. Right. Ain't nobody going to hell over with which one? Mm -hmm. It's your interpretation. <laughs> when I read scripture that talks about do not use profane uh, uh, words and, and don't use filthy communication, it's talking about lying and slander. Mm. And backbiting and gossiping. Ooh, so we've been cuss we've been cursing each other out. I bet you have. what? I have oh been, my god. I have been I have been cussed out worse by Christians who have never used the seven deadly words on the list Ooh, and Lord. never come close to Ooh, an F, a H, a M, F, a A, Ho, or anything else, but have literally tore me down to the point that I had to go to therapy for the church hurt. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I wish you would have just cussed me out. I At wish this point, I would have took the cuss out. I would have rather. Just call me a B. I would have rather. Then the manipulative rebuke you gave from the pulpit, trying to say it was a word from the Lord, but you talking to me. It's 8,000 niggas in the room. You just talking to me. Lord, tell me offline. Tell me offline. So you, you, did, you did worse than cuss me. You tried to curse me. Wow. And then throw God's name and on it. Throw God's name on it. That drives me. <laughs> so I'm, 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 that is insane. Yeah. It's crazy. And I know what you're talking about because I worked Worked for a pastor church. who used to rebuke me from the pulpit without saying my name. And you're talking about something specifically that only me and you know yes. what it's about. But you couldn't pull me to the side and disciple me and have a hard conversation. So you weaponized the That's platform. Right. That's right. Because you can't stand confrontation. Because you can't stand confrontation. And you are weaponizing your position. Absolutely and it's correct. abuse. It's spiritual it, abuse. It is, wow. it is absolutely spiritual abuse. And wow. it's happening all over all the place. The time. And we, and, and so, so my, so uh. I understand. So I understand the landscape now, and I'm like, oh, I get what y'all doing. But here's the thing. People would rather comment than converse. Mm -hmm. Ooh mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And people would rather die a tribe than dialogue. Mm -hmm. my and truth. I have nothing, I don't have a reputation to say. Yeah. I don't have a reputation to uphold. Yeah. In the same way Jesus thought of himself as no reputation mm. and took off glory and put on humanity mm -hmm. to come down with us to, to understand us and then I'm going front to you? No. You? No, Lord it's not going to happen, mercy. fam. And you want this curated, polished thing, but you probably got some dark corners as well because we all do. We all do. And, and instead of just bringing that to the light and just saying it ain't all, it ain't all good and cute yet. Yeah. Yeah. You wanna, you wanna act like don't, don't do, and so the Jesus police feel like any shred of vulnerability is a threat, threat. to people's Christianity. Wow. Yeah. The stumbling block. The stumbling, the stumbling block. block. And, and I yeah. wanna. And so I, that's a very interesting podcast. If you haven't seen that podcast, Go check out that podcast, the Know For Sure podcast with Tim Ross. I watched the first maybe 20 minutes of it. I'll be honest with you. I couldn't get through that podcast because the amount of time that he said the N-word, I was I was getting uncomfortable. <laughs> and I've heard the N-word countless amount of times in my life, right? And I've said it myself. I can't even remember how many times I've said it myself. But the amount of times that he was saying it, I was uncomfortable and I was like, yo, what is going on? What is going on? And I understand what he's saying in terms of like, you know, we shouldn't just be these fake Christians who act like we got everything together, who act all, you know, squeaky clean and polished and everything like that. We shouldn't be these fake Christians who are one way on camera and then a different way when we get off camera. 
And I, I, I agree with that to an extent, but also when we have a platform, we do have to be mindful of the eyes and ears that we are speaking to. We do have to be mindful of how that's going to be, be perceived. We do have to be mindful of other Christians, younger Christians, and how they're going to perceive the information that we're talking about. And in my opinion, I still don't see the benefit to cussing in the manner that I've seen him cussing on various podcasts, including his own podcast. I don't see the benefit to that because immediately when I start to hear those words, my mind is laser focused on that. And I basically forgot the message or the point that you were trying to convey because I'm over here tripping, thinking about, yo, how is this pastor cussing so much? It doesn't make any sense to me. It doesn't make any sense to me. And it's interesting. And once again, these are just all my opinions. It's interesting. And somebody can fact check me if they want to fact check me, but I don't know. Did Tim Ross, when he was pastoring his church, was he using that same language when he was pastoring his church on Sundays? It's just interesting to me, you know? It's interesting to me that when somebody is questioning that behavior, then it's perceived to be slander. When I'm really just trying to understand what is happening here, you know, what is going on? And I think this was a very interesting comment. Um, this was on the post. Um, oh, man, get me off the screen, please. Let me read this comment. This is a comment from, uh, this is a comment from uh, is Ace 18 It says, I understand Tim Ross and Mike Todd are human and no, we're not going to be perfect. But the Lord said that leading is not for everyone because you will be held to a higher standard than the rest. So if you can't keep so if you can't be kept accountable and recognize your faults and change from them, then you shouldn't be in that place of leadership or at least take a season to reevaluate what exactly it is that you are trying to do with your position of leadership and what God has called you to do. I thought that was a great comment. But in listening to the dialogue between Tim Ross and uh, Mike Todd, from my understanding, it sounds like God, from based on what they said, it sounds like God was calling them to do these certain things, you know, God was calling them to, quote unquote, get canceled. Right. So it's kind of hard to like it's hard to, quote unquote, argue with somebody when they say that God told them to do this, you know, when God told them to do the spit demonstration. Which I actually thought the message behind the spit demonstration that Mike Todd did where he spit in his hand and then rubbed it in his brother's face the message behind it in terms of when Jesus did a similar thing, when he healed the blind man, the blind man heard that things were going to get messy, but he still stuck around and he went through it and he received that miracle, right? I thought that was a great message. It's, it's an encouraging message. But the moment you actually spit in your hand and rubbed it on your brother's face, all of that went out the window for me because that's all I'm focused on. I'm, I'm, that's all I'm focused on. And Mike Todd said something extremely, extremely interesting. He was on The Breakfast Club, I think just today or yesterday, recently, because he's on his book tour, right? So he was on The Breakfast Club and he said that in church, when he was younger, he used to be bored. And I think a lot of us can share that same sentiment. Like we used to be bored in church when, when we were younger, right? So he said that the way that he runs Transformation Church is to appeal to his 17-year-old self. And so that's why you see the different levels of entertainment. That's why you see the theatrical elements. That's why you see him pushing the boundaries because he's trying to spice it up so that his 17-year-old self would be entertained 
and also have a way to know Jesus through that entertainment that is church. And I could go a lot deeper into that, but I'm not going to go a lot deeper into that. But that's why I said it's just not for me and it's not hate. I don't I'm not trying to disrespect anybody. I'm just being humble, open and transparent. That's what I'm doing. All right. I know different people are going to take what I'm saying different ways, but I really don't even think I said anything that crazy, to be honest with you. I don't think I've said anything that crazy. It would be interesting to sit down with one of them um, or both of them. Um, I don't know if that would ever happen, though, but that would be interesting. I One thing that I found, uh, I don't want to say that. I don't want to say that. I'll keep it to myself. There was something that that Mike Todd said that I did take personal, but I'll keep it to myself because I don't think it's beneficial to add to this conversation. But anyway, let me just say this and I'll end with this. Um, You know, we all have different convictions. You can't expect my conviction to be your conviction or vice versa, right? But when it comes to certain things, like just because you're not personally convicted of it doesn't make it okay, doesn't make it edifying. And just because you're not personally convicted of it, it could possibly mean that you're just comfortable with it and your comfort is outweighing your conviction. And I'll just leave it at that. So let me know what y'all think about this video. Once again, man, I wish nothing but the best for Mike Todd, for Tim Ross. I'm not really one that is looking for drama. You know, I, I'm just I'm just sharing my opinion. And if it comes, it comes. You know what I mean? So like this video, get in my comments. Let me know what you think about this video. I'm out, y'all.